Chapter 9, Birthday Bedlam. Remember to like and share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Before your eyes, Maggie's reflection grabs her, pulls her through the mirror. Maggie. Instinctively, you plunge into the mirror after them, reaching behind you for Saf's hand to bring her along. Whoa! You catch her by her hand, and the two of you slip effortlessly through the glass. When you open your eyes again, you're in a strange, mystical landscape. Where are we? Just a little pocket of Maggie's imagination. I'm surprised you followed. Of course we followed. You have her sister. But do you even want her back? Or just her talents? We want her. Why would you even ask something like that? Maggie's reflection looks almost mournful, holding your catatonic sister between her and you like a shield. Because she thinks it. We'll buy you before you let you take her, prove to you that we do care. It's too late, she'll be better off with me. Better off in here, where nothing and no one can hurt her. Suddenly the real Maggie stirs and jerks away from her reflection. What the hell let go of me? You assess the well of magic and you solid, sure, like it hasn't been in a while. Looks like it's three on one. Is it? They melt out of the mirrors, dancing around you, picking their way out of the glass and staring at you with cold smiles. Maggie isn't the not the only one with a reflection. We've got our own bones to pick. With that, your own reflection launches herself at you. You're tackled backwards into a mirror, but instead of glass cracking at your back, you simply melt through. You plummet out of the mirror on the opposite side of space, still grappling with your own reflection. You pelt your reflection with a pulse of golden energy separating the two of you. Let go and give me back my sister. Oh, but that's not what you really want, Willow. With the same venomous, uh, sickly yellow eminence is mirrored in her hands, clashing with your own power. Fine, then I want you to stop tormenting us. Shallow surface. In I'm in the glass where you hide your deepest self. The secret desires you try and avoid staring at you too closely. I want. I want. The chance to be a real family. The words burst out of you before you really grasp what you're saying. Finally, some honesty. For a mere moment, you see your own reflected face flicker and morph, and she almost looks like... Mom? No, just you. When she was alive, I was too cowardly and hurt to reach out and see if we could change. I'm not going to make the same mistake with my sisters. I'm not going to fail them. I'll fight for what I want. It has nothing to do with the magic. I just want my family to stay together. But I sure as hell am not going to let my own reflection stop me magic ripples out of you and you see your reflection slow and freeze trapped in a bubble of golden motes and then you see her face go peaceful memories or imaginings wrapping around her like a warm blanket at least one of us gets what we want she vanishes in a saw burst of soft white light flashbang Wait, no time to linger. You leave your reflection behind and turn to see Saf and her reflection, but neither of them have the telltale smoky aura. Willow, I need your help. Don't listen to her. She's the reflection. I need you. Uh, tell me something only the real Saf would know. The night I ran away from home for good, I told you I'd never be far away. I lied. I remember. Ever since I've been running one way or another, chasing novelty, constantly reinventing myself. Why couldn't you stay? Did you not like who you were with me? I just didn't like who I was, period. That didn't change as much as I tried to change. It's changed now, though I finally found a version of myself that I love. And I'll do anything I can to protect it. Ah, there it is, the smoke. In that moment, she morphs her arm into a huge axe, swinging it down towards the other sap. 
get in the way. Attack mirror staff. No. You slam into the attacking staff with a, your shoulder. She smashes into a mirror, sending shards of spectral glass everywhere. Gotcha. Yeah, pick up a shard of mirror. Make it make it like you're going to slice down into a SAF number one's chest. Wait! Well, the other SAF, the one who you save, catches your arm mid-thrust. I know she's fighting us, but she still feels what I feel. She's still me. And will we supposed to believe what you say? I trust SAF, and I knew the real her wouldn't let me hurt you. Clever. I think... I think my job here is done. With a shiver of light, she vanishes, and you and the real Saf take a moment to breathe, looking at each other solemnly. Flashbang. Through the fractured eye lines of infinite reflections in this hall of mirrors, you see Maggie held aloft by her throat. How dare you try and confine me, control me after everything I've done for you? What? You've been stalking me through my dreams! Let her go. The reflection's gaze snaps to you, snarling. Don't bother getting involved, you're just temporary. You wish. We're here for our sister, and we're not leaving without her. As if we believe that. We're still waiting for you to turn your backs on us. Maggie didn't even bother to tell you it's our birthday tomorrow. Didn't think they'd care, did you, Mags? You and Sav stare at each other, stunned by this revelation. Maggie groans when her reflection tightens her grip. You have to expect disappointment, Maggie. It keeps you safe. I keep you safe. I've had enough of the Saf. I need a weapon. Heavy, sharp, ranged, ranged. You got it. Wait, she can turn herself into a bow and arrow. Saf turns into an elegant bow, improvising an arrow. You knock a long broken slice of glass and let it fly towards Maggie's reflection. Take this. But it passes right through her reflection in a plume of smoke. Damn, it isn't working. Wait, I have an idea. Maggie's trauma stems from the way she, before she met us, right? The law gazes with Saf as an implication of her words sinks into place. Here goes nothing. Focus your magic on Maggie's heart. Reach for a time when she needed you more than ever. Your magic takes you backwards through time until you find yourself in an unfamiliar apartment. Whoa. Where am I? Now then, Maggie, you'll be living here now. How do you like it? You turn to see a young Maggie with a woman you don't recognize. Maggie looks about around fidgeting. Miss Andrews, I'm happy you took me in, but why did the last family send me away? Did I do something wrong? Oh no, no, honey, it's not like that. Sometimes things just happen. But it keeps happening. Woman's face softens. The sound of another child's yell and a toddler crying pulls her attention away. This is your bedroom. You'll share with Kelly Ann. Go ahead and unpack your things. Maggie's bag is this all she has. As Maggie's harried foster mom leaves the room, Maggie's dark reflection speaks up from a nearby mirror. I wouldn't bother unpacking. You won't stay here long. I know you say it's bad to get attached, but Miss Andrews seems nice. They always seem nice. That doesn't mean they won't abandon us like everyone else. She's not our family. She doesn't even know today's your birthday. Ah, this seems to happen her every time around her birthday. Young Maggie wipes a single tear from her face, steals herself, and then sits on the bottom bunk of her new bed. You're right. Sorry. With a whisper of a sigh, Maggie's reflection vanishes. Her bag sits beside her, untouched. Is that what it was like for you, Mags? You know that you're in a memory. It's some strange combination of dream and time magic, but it feels like you're, when you met your younger self, the potential to mold the world to your will is at your fingertips. I'll bring her home to unpack, celebrate with young Maggie. 
you step forward and you from your imagination, your will to cheer up your this younger isolated self protecting Maggie, a birthday cake appears in your hands. I hear it's somebody's birthday. Young Maggie stares at you suspicious and then relaxes like she knows she can trust you. Yeah, how would you know? I I never tell anyone it's my birthday. No one has ever really had time to celebrate. Oh, Mags, I promise you someday you'll be with people who want to celebrate you. And I promise, you become a very cool grown-up. Awesome. I'm sorry you have to get through so many hard years to get there, but I can't make the past better. But I can celebrate you now, who you are, who you'll become, what you mean to me. Happy birthday, Maggie Graves. The tremulous smile. Little Maggie closes her eyes and blows out the birthday candles. And suddenly you reappear in your attic with Saf and Maggie beside you. We're back? Looks like it. Maggie, did you see me in your memories just now? I did. Thank you. I think I needed that reminder that I have somewhere I belong now. Maybe my reflection has never stalked me. <sighs> Maybe I've been trying to hold on to a part of me I don't need as much anymore. You want to tell her that yourself? Maggie spins and looks into the mirror, where her reflection peers back, a sad smile on her face that doesn't match Maggie's unsettled expression. I really was trying to protect you. The real Maggie puts her hand to the glass, and this time the reflection follows suit. I know. I really needed you all those years. Maybe we can both let our guard down a little. If you're willing to stay with me, that is. Saf smiles beside you, giving her hand a, your hand a squeeze as you watch Maggie reconcile with her reflection. I think I'd like that. As it, Maggie's expression finally matches that of her reflection. With a buzz of magic, a release of tension you didn't know was there. Maggie's reflection is her own again. Oof. Maggie suddenly slides to the floor unconscious. You and Saf rush to her side to see her fast asleep. She must be exhausted, poor thing. And we better haul her house to bed and get to work. You and I have our birthday party to plan. You're up early the next morning decorating the living room with streamers and balloons. Are we going overboard with this? Absolutely not. We always wanted streamers and balloons when we were kids, remember? This is all just a decoy anyway, so she doesn't suspect the real party at Neutral Grounds. I hope she likes it. I'm honestly just glad we get to celebrate her at all. It's hard to believe she didn't tell us about her birthday. I mean, it is pretty on brand for Maggie to be secretive. I guess you're right, her birthday clearly doesn't have any happy memories attached. Saf rips a piece of tape and hangs it on the streamer above the door, a look of determination on her face. Well, that all changes today. Project Best Birthday Ever is a go. Finally, the room is decked out. You slump on the couch and take a swig of cold coffee. Honestly, we outdid ourselves. I think the place looks perfect. I know something that could make it even better. Remember how you and I used to make mom breakfast in bed for her birthday? I almost forgot about that. It was one of the best day, or the only days of the year we'd see her smile. Exactly. If it was enough to brighten even mom's day, it should work on Mags. After everything she went through with her reflection, it's the least we can do too. Diamond choice. You and Saf tiptoe over to Maggie's bed, balancing a breakfast platter between you. The result of an hour's hard work in the kitchen. Don't you dare drop my pancakes, Willow Hallowell. Shh. Asleep in her bed, Maggie frowns and rolls to her side. We should wake Maggie. With party music. With one hand, you slip your phone out of your pocket, crank it full volume, and choose the perfect song to blast your sister away. Ah! Oh, 
Maggie bolts, legs tangled in the sheets. She falls, but gets caught hanging halfway to the floor. You and Saf break into giggles. Happy birthday, Maggie! You freeze, but Maggie thankfully starts to laugh as she writes herself. I should have known you two would pull something like this. What's going on? This is going on. Wow. Can I have, please? Please? You lay the platter of steaming hot breakfast on her lap gently. This is our birthday tradition, breakfast in bed. We wanted to do something special for you. Wow, thanks, this looks awesome. She sits up looking stunned and a little embarrassed as if not sure where to even begin. There you go, I'll help. You caught a slice and zoom it into her mouth while making airplane noises. She gives you a withering glare. <laughs> you don't have to feed me. I'm not a toddler. Then why are you so cute? You paint her cheeks and she laughs, swatting you away. Thanks for going through all this trouble. The whole special birthday surprise thing is new to me. I have to ask... Why didn't you tell us? Tell you what? That it's your birthday today, dummy. Oh, that, well... Honestly, I kinda hate my birthday. Your stomach drops, the mood in the room suddenly sours. Oh, Maggie. Honey, I'm sorry. We didn't think... Maggie sighs, eyes dropping to her lap. After my parents died and I was put in foster care, I never celebrated my birthday again. Why not? I didn't exactly hit the jackpot when it came to foster parents. The first for a few times, they even bothered to get me a gift. It was something dumb, like a, a lotto ticket. You've got to be kidding me. I wish I was. When I turned 15, my foster dad at the time even tried drafting up emancipation papers. Oh, hell no. You weren't kidding when you said you didn't hit the jackpot. Willow saw one of the uh, nice foster moms during the reflection ritual, but she was always stressed. And I wasn't with her long enough to celebrate my birthday anyway. We'll make up for la lost time. Oh yeah, we definitely will. We have a lot of years to build happy memories to balance out the bad ones, Max. So I should expect more birthday shenanigans. Maggie watches you both suspiciously. What do you two have up your sleeve? Nothing. Just breakfast. A happy family breakfast. And a quiet day with friends. Good. That sounds like a decent way to spend a birthday. But as Maggie looks down at her huge platter of food, her eyes start to well with tears. She brushes them away impatiently. Maggie... No, 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 it's okay. These are happy tears. I may not have had much to celebrate back then, but I do now, and it's all thanks to you two. Does that mean you like the breakfast? Obviously I like breakfast, Saf, and I'm not going to let all the food go to waste. You better not, those pancakes are awesome. The fluffiest. Are you sure? I've seen some really fluffy pancakes recently. They're literally from a box. Oh my god, you're such a narc! Boxed or not, no one's ever gone through this much effort for me. Thank you, too. I mean it. Believe me when I say, you deserve every bit of it. And believe me when I say, Willow is going to regret missing my pancakes. Maggie laughs, and the three of you share her breakfast together, squeezing in on her bat, teasing and joking all morning long. Later that day, you text Brooks about the party you're throwing for Maggie at neutral grounds. How are we looking? Anything I uh, can do to help? Party's in order. We definitely have enough booze. But I desperately need gifts, last minute ideas. What you got? Big old smooch would do nicely. Mmm. Oh my god, I'm not doing that. Also, need I remind you that that is your sister. We aren't talking about this. I know you like her, don't lie. Yeah, but she ran like something was chasing around a pennies the other day. 
Definitely not gonna kiss her out of the gate. But, but my best friend and my sister. <sighs> LMAO. I will find my own gift. Thanks for nothing. You know, you could give her a hug if a kiss won't subside. Or, you know, whatever. Hey, Willow! Huh? What? Where's the fire? What's wrong? Is Maggie okay? Maggie's fine, but you need to come with me. You head upstairs with Saf, and she disappears in her closet. Remember how we used to dress up on our birthdays? Finally, we can get out of the wear that we've been wearing for a while now. You always come in clutch for, for me with something amazing. Somehow, we've figured out uh, how you manage that. Are you kidding? You were like my little doll back then. I love nothing more than dressing you up, especially. Well, especially since I couldn't dress me up, but not the way I wanted anyway. Oh, Sam. I never knew that was why. Eh, I never told you, but I'm hoping the sympathetic puppy dog look on your face means you'll indulge me. She presents a new outfit on a hanger with a floor issue. Laugh and disbelieve. You really never sleep, do you? Hey, we invited Rainier and Kane, and you played Cupid for me and Penny when we first met. Consider it my way of returning the favor. Diamond choice. Bonds of sisterhood. Outfit looks pretty. Matches her whole power aura thing. You admire yourself in the mirror, running your thumbs over the soft fabric and detailing. Okay, mm I think I can indulge you just this once. She sighs happily, fluffing your hair and smiling at you over your shoulder. Thanks, Willow. I want today to be perfect. Everyone together happy. Everyone with normal reflections. In that case, we better go get the party started. Rainier meets you outside of neutral grounds where Maggie eyes him suspiciously. What are you doing here? Hey, uh, Rainier. What are you doing here? You give Rainier a pointed look. You swore him to secrecy over text, but you're not sure how much he understood about human surprise party rituals. I like coffee. Yeah, well, let's get a move on. The coffee is not going to drink itself. As you head inside, the shop is suspiciously quiet until Penny and Brooke pops up from behind the counter. Surprise! Surprise! Whoa. Maggie falls back against you and Saf, genuinely startled as Benny and Brooks set off a silly string and confetti cannons and a huge birthday banner unfurls from the ceiling. Happy birthday, Maggie. Aren't you so surprised? Maggie blinks, looking more shell-shocked than anything. You and Saf take her hands. You did all this for me. Of course. Only the best for Mags. A smile finds his way across her face. You guys, you really did surprise me. Yeah, I knew it. We got you so good. You should have seen your face. We know it's um, a lot, but we wanted to show you how much we care. You feel Rainier's tense beside you as Kane saunters out of the corner and salutes. Mags, always a pleasure. You know, I'm in too good a mood to contradict that statement. Remember what we talked about, Wraith. Rainier's hand rests set on his sword. Suddenly you realize why he's in armor. Hey, I'm sticking to my end of the bargain. No nefarious deeds, no stabby stabbing. The least you can do is return the not kill vibe. Rainier scowls, but Kane snaps his fingers and starts the music blaring. The party is officially underway. As everyone splits naturally into groups, you decide who to chat with first. We'll mingle with Brooks and Maggie first. Hopefully they allow us all the decision to go to all three versus the other day. You find Brooks and Maggie huddled together in the corner laughing over their drinks. I was wondering where you two ran off to. Willow, this party is awesome. I can't believe you pulled this off. And now I get why you're all dressed up. Did you get a new outfit to celebrate little old me? Technically, Saf got it for me. It's a long story, but it's one of our traditions. 
and you wanted to make me a part of it. That's so freaking cute, I want to barf. She surprises you by pulling you in a one-armed hug, you grin bewildered at Brooks over her shoulder. We've learned today that Drunk Maggie is, um, affectionate. I'm glad you're having fun, Mags, but really, Brooks did all the work. Brooks, you, you really did that. Uh, well, yeah, you deserve it, Maggie. You deserve everything. My ex never did anything like this for me. Uh, we're bringing up the ex, though. They gaze at each other for so long you start to think you should leave them alone, but before you do, you give them a nudge. Don't tell anyone, but Brooks, like, likes you. I think that qualifies as a telling willow, but you're not wrong. Oh, finally. Admittance. Maggie's mouth falls open if she turns you, then Brooks, and back to you, then unable to formulate a single word. I was gonna wait until after the party, but do you want to grab dinner with me sometime? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, sure, let, let's do it. Brooks grins and squeezes Maggie's hand gently. And, uh, it's a date. Yay, we'll see what Kane and Penny, or Rainier and Penny. I was thinking of Kane's shh, best for last, you know. You find Rainier and Penny in a heated debate about healing crystals. I'm telling you, Penny, crystals really don't have any effect on mortals. Well, sweetie, I know you're a mortal, but I've been studying crystal healing for years. It's not nonsense. And we're amethyst for spiritual protection. Keep my... Labradorite on my desk for inspiration. It's bunk science. Any effect you feel is completely psychosomatic. And that's bad because of... I seem to have stumbled upon an intellectual debate. Did you realize there's a party going on? Oh, good, Willow. If anyone can help me convince him, it's you. Alternatively, you can help me convince her that I'm right. I'm with... Penny. Of course, crystals are helpful. Minerals affect mortals' bodies on a chemical level. Fluorite helps our teeth. So, why can't Lapis Lazuli um, open your third eye? And he smiles smugly at Rainier, who looks like he wants to object, but then he shakes his head, suppressing a smile. Okay, I'm choosing to let this one go. Smart Guardian! With a wink, Penny flounces off to get a drink. Rainier leans towards you and mutters, Please tell me you were just humoring her. Even placebo effects are still effects, Rainier. Yep. Rainier chuckles, smiling at you warmly. I wanted to tell you, you look very nice today. Thanks for noticing. Rainier's back straightens uncomfortably in your side. Now, are you gonna tell me why you shouldn't be noticing how pretty I look because it's against the rules? You had no trouble telling me I was pretty when we, you were just a coffee shop customer. <sighs> well, in that case, just for today, I'll be the customer again, and the setting is certainly right. And your glances around your place where you first met, before everything became so complicated. Willow. I've been thinking a lot, and things I shouldn't be thinking. His eyes are suddenly on you, lit from within. Like, how tempted I am to break the rules again. A shiver runs down your back, remembering the moment where Rainier's self-restraint had finally broke, how he'd actually kissed you back. Rainier, your cheeks heat from the memory of how playfully he'd let himself give in to wanting, and now his hand hovers near the small of your back, afraid to touch. You should go enjoy the party, but find me later if you want to step out for a little while. There are things I want to talk to you about privately. Saf and Kane. Find Saf and Kane snickering a punch bowl, which gets your mischief sense tingling. Since when are you two such good friends? Since I caught this one magic spiking the punch. I whipped up a little potion for chaos magic. Anybody who drinks it will get a random harmless side effect. Taking care for two hours, speaking in rhyme, leaving glitter on everything you touch. Or you could grow a dragon tail, have eyes that glow in the dark, cool ass stuff like that. He winks. I added a couple of my own. 
That's genius. Give me the potion. Hell yeah! King grins and hands over the vial. You have to get into the punch. You just made my black heart so happy. I'm gonna wait and see who our first victim is. Cackling like a cartoon villain, she skips off. Now that you're alone, Kane's expression warms as he takes you in. Have I told you how gorgeous you look today? Hmm, I don't know. So many people have complimented me today, it's hard to keep track. He smirks, reaches out to run his fingertip highly along your shoulder, tracing the strap of your tank top. Almost innocent, but you know better. You, uh, always gotta be, uh, such a punk? Something about you just brings that out in me. Hmm. Join me out back later, little witch. If you're brave enough, that is. Hours later. After freshening up, refilling your drink, you join Penny in a booth, watching Saf and Maggie dance animately. They're having a great time, aren't they? You wouldn't believe they were butting heads a couple days ago. Eh, they're still butting heads, believe me. But that's what sisters do. You scan the room for any sign of Kane and Rainier. Penny bumps her knee against yours under the table. Rainier went off to the roof. I think saw Kane sneak out into the back garden. If you want, you can slip off and find some time alone. I guess it wouldn't hurt to get some fresh air. Join Rainier or Kane outside for a moment apiece. A romantic moment in this exclusive scene. So basically we get to choose. Mmm, who will I be picking? You climb the stairs to the roof. Finally finding Rainier sitting on the ledge, gazing up at the night sky. There you are. He looks over his shoulder, a slow smile spreading across his face as though he expected you to find him here. I'm glad you decided to join me, to be honest. I knew I'd need a little bit of solitude tonight. You sit down beside him, dangling your legs over the edge of the wall, like he is. And Rainier's eyes go wide. He offers his hand up to help you. Hey, be careful. I'm fine. You're probably not used to all the noise and chaos in the human realm. Hmm. It can be a little overwhelming, but I'm having a really nice time. Eh, this kind of thing you did for Maggie, you're a good sister to her. Honestly, it was mostly Brooks who put this together. But it was you and Saf's idea. You made sure Maggie was celebrated, that means something. It's nothing. Everyone deserves to be celebrated, but Maggie especially. It tears me up inside that we've missed everything important in our life until now. I think I know how you feel. Sometimes I think the same thing about the three of you. You do? You look at him in surprise, but he doesn't elaborate. I'm sorry for barging into your room last night without permission. It wasn't just rude, it was... He shakes his head and gazes out across the horizon. We shouldn't have been so close. He looks in your eyes, the fire in them almost as bright as when he kissed you last night. What I did, there's no excuse for it. I'm sorry I let my feelings run away from me. Rainier, I like getting close to you. He inhales sharply when he speaks, his voice is soft. Willow, as much as I want to, we can't do this. I couldn't live with myself if I was the reason that you or your sisters were hurt. He looked down at you and his hands, inches apart on the roof's edge, but unable to touch. Your heart twists painfully. I understand. I've tried to keep my distance from the Coven's personal lives for your sakes and my own, but no matter how hard I try, I can't keep feeling attached to you. You feel his eyes on you, warm, dazzling in the night air, making your blood rush. You've really charmed me, you know, more than I ever thought possible. That's a bit, a bit of a backhanded compliment. I, I didn't mean it to be, it's just... I started to think of us as friends, Willow, real friends, and I'm happy to feel that. Oh yeah, just friends? His expression softens. I think you know by now you're special to me. What I feel for you is just... is more than friendship. I know, but it's nice to hear you say it. 
you as a, you smirk at Rainier, a streak of something bright catches your eye, and you leap to your feet. Rainier, look, a shooting star. You point to the fading point in the light in the sky, and Rainier joins you in standing, watching as more silver streaks cross the velvety heavens. Make a wish. I wish that our coven succeeds in everything they do, and then we continue down the path we're on and find our strength. You're such a sap. Hmm. Let's hear your wish, then. You gaze up at the silent, twinkling stars as they dazzle across the sky. I wish that you would kiss me. Willow. He hesitates, his eyes flicking upwards at the sky, and then sweeps you into his arms and kisses you like he's been waiting all night for this chance. Arms around your waist, he locks you against him, securing you against the chill of the night air. Your heart slams against your ribs, and for the moment, you can't forget. This is allowed. Or isn't allowed. You lose yourself to how right and magical it feels to be able to kiss him under the shower of falling stars as if no one else exists. We can't stay here. We'll be missed. I could freeze time. But it wouldn't be forever. He murmurs against your lips, making you shiver. And anything less than forever would only leave me wanting more. He leans in to kiss you one last time, drawing it out as long as possible, and then you feel him reluctantly pull away. Let's stay until the stars are gone. Fine. You know, I have very little self-control when it comes to you. At least my wish came true. You rest your head on his shoulder, watching the stars fall, and he doesn't move away. Hours later, Maggie rounds everyone up and drunkenly calls for silence. I just wanted to say thank you. You're all seriously the best sisters, friends, a girl could ask for. Ah, uh, even me? For today, Kane, yes, even you. The others laugh and cheer, even Rainier huffs out a small chuckle. And before we get back to the this party back on track, I just wanted to tell you all how much I love... Suddenly glass shards fly as windows explode. You watch in horror as two race step through the broken windows into neutral grounds. Having a party without us? How rude! Peter... What, what the hell are you doing here? Oh, come on, Max. I'm just here to wish my ex-girlfriend a happy birthday. Uh, Max? When were you going to tell us your ex-boyfriend was a wraith? Yeah, but why does your ex-boyfriend need to break the windows? Without further ado, thanks for watching. Love you, beautiful faces. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description. Plenty of things to check out there. I'm going to go ahead and have a talk now. So if you uh, want to listen to a personal thing I'm going to share, feel free to stay. Hopefully you do. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> <sighs> Birthdays. I hate them. I feel like Maggie. I really do. Um... I've never had a birthday party ever. I've never had friends over for my birthday. I don't really have friends besides uh, people I've met online who I have called as friends. I once had a friend when I was younger, but unfortunately, um, my family and their whole shebang and their nonsensical BS, um, pretty much I wasn't allowed to have a birthday party. Um, most of my birthdays were crap, so uh, I myself don't really cheers or... or really celebrate my own birthdays you would figure especially if you know about my health issues and everything else recently you would think that you know this is this may be my possibly my last birthday that i recently had and um nothing really was done via what little nuclear family that i have and uh pretty much it was silence from everyone including my friends so um Again, I don't really celebrate it because, you know, I don't, I don't know, many reasons, some of which I share with Maggie. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I definitely feel Maggie from there. And I definitely feel uh, Will and Seth, that everybody should be celebrated, everybody, you know, um, especially those who make a difference in the world. Right. Um, it is what it is. Let me just leave on a good note instead of, you know, dropping all that on you. 
each day go out into the world if you can and try and make someone's day. Literally. Go out and make someone's day. Um, you know, try and be genuine, but just be like, hey, how you doing? Be nice to a cashier. I don't know. Maybe they're having a bad day. Just be like, hey, nice nice nails, nice shirt, nice shoes, nice nice something, right? Just be genuine. Just be nice. It only takes a few seconds. Right? Um, you know, you, you, <laughs> a lot of people are going to be like, well, you should tip your, you know, uh, say for instance, barista and all that. No, no, no. You should just be nice. Um, you, you don't have to give financially away for just to be nice. A lot of people have that misconception, too. Just the simple words of happy birthday for people are, are more than enough to, you know, make them happy. Um, versus not having it at all. So, um, a lot of us all have our own journeys, our own things that we've gone through in the whole nine yards. And sometimes, you know, um, just some of us have gone through a lot more than others. So keep that in mind. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, catch you all later. Peace out.